Today's video, I'm going to be doing a review of the Insta360 X3. You can record 360 video. You can see there is two cameras, these big round cameras. That's what can make it 360. So if I turn now, so if I click on this button here, there is a 360 option and a single length, a single length, yeah, a single lens option. Okay. Um, so you can see there's photo, video, and meme mode, and if you're wondering what meme mode is, the camera comes with a boomstick, and it actually cuts out the boomstick, um, which is really, really cool. Here's some video with the single lens. It looks really, really nice. The camera footage is very, very nice. The resolution and FPS. Um, it records in 4K resolution and can record up to more than 60 FPS depending on what mode. Some modes you can only go up to 30, some modes even like 120. Uh, depends on what, what mode you're on. So, what modes do we have here? So, so there's of course sing in single lens, there's video, there's me mode, loop recording. So, loop recording, um, so let's say you're waiting for something to happen. Let's say you're waiting for some fireworks to happen or something. You don't know when it's gonna happen, so you go to loop recording. After, let's say, an hour, it happens. And you wanna only have the last 30 minutes of that hour to be recorded um so it doesn't take up as much space then you click 30 minutes and then it will cut out the last 30 minutes before the 30 minutes it, it will take up less space than um anything past 30 or whatever you turn in will be deleted and then there's 360 mode so we have video active hdr time lapse time shift bullet time loop recording as well to star lapse Burst, Interval, and HDR. So the Active HDR and HDR Photo. With HDR, you have a more bigger dynamic range. There's no contrast. Um, and it's better to record this in lighter conditions, like if you're outside in the daytime or something. Now, like I said, there isn't much contrast in that, and it's more bland. Um, which you can, of course, again, correct that in color correction afterwards. So time lapse, self-explanatory. You can, you know, have a time lapse of from day to night. So bullet time is just slow motion, basically. So 360 slow motion, which is pretty cool. So you could be walking or like jumping in slow motion in 360. And some people have made some pretty cool looking interesting videos like that. Star lapse. So basically star lapse, you're probably wondering why star lapse over time lapse wouldn't they be the same thing? Well, they definitely aren't, because star lap, as you can tell by the name, it's more focused on the star than anything else. It's a exposure in that it's going to be very, very different, and if you use the normal time lapse, you might not be able to see the stars, or it would just be very, very bad. But if you use, if you use star lapse, then you'll be able to see all the stars and stuff like that. So you can see here, I'm on star lapse right now and you guys can't even see the screen. It is super duper white, um, but at night it looks very, very awesome. So we also have burst. So this burst takes nine shots rapidly, okay? So if you, when you push the photo button um, after maybe three seconds or something, whatever you set it to, it will take nine shots as a burst. So that way you can choose your vi your photo selected a uh, frame that you really, really like instead of the other photos that might not be so good, you know? Um, so let's say you're gonna do a jump. You wanna choose a good photo in that jump, but if it's in a video, it might be blurry and stuff like that. Uh, but as a burst, better and you can choose your frame and it will be perfectly clear. So that's all the different modes there. So we have two buttons and you might be thinking they're the same. In fact, I did this mistake myself. Um, so you can see there is a button here and that is for... It, it will show that, that you're switching cameras, right? So if I push it again showing you you guys if i click it again it looks like it's facing me but the problem is this is only for preview okay i thought that it was the actual camera itself that was switching in the recording but it wasn't okay for that you have to push this button that kind of looks like some folders you push that and then it will quickly change and this is actually for recording so you can switch to inner lens outer single lens it also switches to 360 mode, 
and then yeah so it just cycles between inner inner lens outer lens and 360 range which is pretty cool um then you have this side button here um and it shows you this quick menu um and you have all these these different uh presets and you can add your own presets with the plus icon there or ex exit out with the x so basically Let's say you don't want every time you go from night time to daytime, you don't want to change your settings every single time. So you just add a preset by clicking the plus icon and then you'll just have to go into the me to quick menu with this button and then choose it and then bam, you just change your settings just like that. So that's pretty cool and you can always change it whenever you want. That's really, really awesome. So if you swipe right like that, then you'll have these different modes so this is where you choose all your saturation uh your different modes so there's vivid here if you go to the, all the way to the left you have your color settings these vivid log and standard uh log is very very gray um so there's literally no color basically not very nice looking it's but the great thing about log is that the color correction of course you can really do a lot of color correction with log you i don't think you'd really want to use it anyways um i think it's better to use vivid vivid has the most saturation um, and comes with less problems than log and standard um vivid is more, more saturated vibrant all that stuff um log and a ton of contrast as well and log is just plain but it has some problems for example noise stuff like that vivid is just the best overall and you can still color correct it very easily um so vivid would be pretty awesome you also have an auto button so it would automatically do it for you if you if not manual but you'd have to do that yourself um so let's go if we go left if we go left that to right then you have all your videos that you've recorded you can look through them and then you just swipe from right to left again to get out of it and if you swipe from top to bottom then you come with even more settings okay so we have quick capture okay this is the little rocket icon that you'll see here um the rocket icon it's quick capture so what that means is if your camera is off and you quickly want to record something let's say elephant goes past i don't know why there would be an elephant going past but anyways let's say you quickly want to record that but you don't want to turn on your camera and it takes a very very long time and then by then it's probably gone with quick with quick capture with quick what you have to do is when your phone is off all you have to do is click the record button and then it already starts recording the moment you push it even though the camera is off and then it turns on uh so that's pretty cool um, but the reason you'd want to turn that off, let's say it's in your pocket or something, and then something, and then it just starts recording automatically, and then you just waste all your battery and stuff like that, and you don't want that, so that's why, in that case, you'd probably want to turn it off, but other than that, you'd want to keep it on, um, I'm, I'm just gonna keep that one on, um, you also have your vibrations for when you push buttons and stuff, um, all that stuff, by the way, so here, this is dive case mode so that means yes you can dive in the water with this thing up to 10 meters underwater um that's pretty far but then you have settings again over here so you got even more settings um so you have anti-flicker bit rate vi voice control video sharpness and all that stuff so the main settings you'd really want to worry about is video sharpness bit rate and anti-flicker um so anti-flicker imagine you're at night um, pro there's probably going to be quite a lot of flickering, so you can just turn it on or off or whatever. Um, and there's, I just, I'm just keeping it on auto. There's also video bit rate, so this is going to be how much detail your camera is going to get. So there's standard and high, I'm going to keep it on high, but of course it's going to take a lot more space in your camera. And problem is the camera already takes tons and tons of space like quite a problem you will need a very massive uh sd card to be put in here so you also got video sharpness i'm gonna keep my video sharpness on low and the reason why is because if you have it on any of the other modes there is kind of some problems for example the blades of grass would be like super sharp and like it'd be kind of pixelated looking and stuff like that and 
you know, the outside of your body would like be like white kind of thing and it's not, it's a bit noticeable and it's like, huh, what, what is that? How come the video footage looks weird? Um, and that's because you, your video sharpness is probably on one of these modes. But I'm just going to keep it on low and also it's because, again, color correction, you can just add some sharpness later if you want some. You also got gyro calibra cal calibration, there we go. Gyro cal calibration. So this is very important because if you're, let's say, recording 360 mode or something, when you move the camera, there's the horizon in the distance, right? Um, but it might start bending and stuff like that and it looks really weird because the camera doesn't exactly know that that's the horizon. Um, that's why gyro collaboration is very important. Basically, just put it on your desk or whatever. Say so this is my desk. And you just keep it there and then you follow the steps and then it will collaborate. So that way the horizon looks good. You also got the customize button option, uh, which is over here, right above the gyro one. So this customizes this folder looking button. Uh, so right now it switches to single lens or 360 mode or outer lens mode. Um, but you can also change it, take photo, record video. Um, uh, but I wouldn't really recommend it because that's what this button does. And this button looks more like a record button than this one does. It's up to you. I personally would keep it as is. Um, and yeah. Um, oftentimes also, people would format the SD card, and this is so it's more calibrated with the camera, I guess you could say. So basically, it might have some abnormal storage issues, stuff like that. So this camera can take photos of up to 72 megapixels, and also can record up to 5.7K video. Which is very very high res also like i said before 360 photos and videos um waterproof up to 10 meters um an invisible selfie stick also has some shake control so and it trust me it does make a big difference so it's very stable um and it doesn't have too bad audio it's not too bad it is of course a bit windy and stuff and overall in the long run you'd probably rather want mics that is attached, another mic, um, which you can actually add in the settings somewhere. Uh, there we go, external mic gain. So you can connect it to this and do some more stuff with it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Of course, the anti-flicker, quick record, easy to bring everywhere because this is actually smaller than a phone, very much smaller than a phone. Um, so it's much easier to carry everywhere and you can even attach this, like you can see here, to your bike or anything like that. Um, so it's very easy to bring everywhere, very small. Active HDR, lots of, and lots of different modes. Has 8K 360 time-lapse. That is very awesome. Um, and I believe the max FPS is for bullet time at 120 FPS. Pretty cool. And also, there's some different audio modes. In the normal settings, when you swipe up, there's at the top right, you can see there, there's three settings. There's direction focus, wind noise reduction, and stereo. Stereo um, is kind of like just normal audio. Direction focus though is very like there's a lot of panning. Uh, and if you don't know what that means, so let's say something is on your right and it will take the audio and output it to your right instead of just in the middle, you know? So that's what direction focus is. And right now I have it on wind noise reduction. Um, so yes, there is one like that. Only really cons are that it is not the best in low light conditions. You can change some settings and stuff to make it look better in, in uh, nighttime and that. But preferably you'd want to use it in the daytime. And also another con is, of course, I mentioned this before. Um, it's that it takes up so much space. Alright, so the biggest file for the Insta360 that I have recorded recently was 10.2 gigabytes for only 24 minutes. That is crazy. 24 minutes for 10 gigabytes. That is pretty crazy. So you need you need a pretty big SD card for it. It actually shows you how much card is left on the top here. It shows you how much you can record. Only one hour and 19 minutes, and this is, it, it isn't even a bad SD card. It is, I believe, 60 gigabytes or something like that. So that is, those are the downsides of it. 
um, but I would still pretty much recommend re recommend it because it's pretty cool. You can do a lot of really cool videos, maybe even music videos, stuff like that. Pretty unique, and you can make just a lot of different type of videos like that. Um, so if you enjoyed, please make sure you like and subscribe because then I won't murder you with this banana. Dun dun dun. Uh, and also visit uh, my other videos of unboxing and reviews, because, yeah.